March 13th? Yeah, March 13th. Three, one, two, one, three. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> we don't, we're not being taped tonight? Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm behind you. Can you introduce no, yourself, please? Uh, Craig from North Street Neighborhood Association. Okay. Craig Rogers. Craig Rogers, yes. Um, okay, first for your consideration, the uh, minutes from the February 27th <coughs> meeting. Move to accept. Second. Any thoughts, comments, adjustments? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, first, the Agricultural Commission is here. To, uh, they'd like to speak to us about maintenance of roads and the meadows. Right, well, I'm just here as the chairman, but uh, Chip and uh, Rich actually work in the meadows, so they have a better understanding of what needs to be done. For that. Well, first of all, <coughs> uh, would you just introduce yourself, I'm please? Sorry. Rich Jasky, okay. Vice Chairman of the Ag Commission. I'd like to thank the Board of Public Works and for going down last year in the spring and grading the road. Okay? I want to be upfront about that. We appreciate that. We want to make sure that we continue to have maintenance on those roads down there. I understand there are roads that aren't publicly accepted. These are roads that the city uh, shouldn't be doing. I understand that. But there, there are the main arteries going in, I'm sure, are public roads. And I think what we're trying to say is we would like to continue the maintenance on the roads that the city owns to facilitate getting these trucks and tractors and the produce in and out of those meadows. And that's kind of critical. Chip was telling me they take a hundred truckloads of corn out of those meadows in the fall. And that's a lot of corn. That's just one farm. You've got Kowalski potato farms, you've got Goulet, the alley farms bringing out probably many more loads. Um, the one thing I was hoping is that we would be able to have a fall cleanup, just just to touch them up in the fall when the harvest is going on, and that didn't happen last year. Um, and that was a concern. I'd, I'd like to hope that we could get, you know, at least the roads somewhat graded so that when the guys are bringing these loads of corn out and bringing the loads of potatoes out, that they can have decent roads to, within reason. They don't break their springs, you don't get them brake drums just covered with water, which is what's happening. Some of the holes are pretty deep. Mm -hmm. So uh, and there's other things as well, of course, the emergency vehicles that need to get down in there, which is, you know, kind of another subject, but it's important. But I think the whole purpose of us being here is to, first of all, thank the board for encouraging this to be done, but also the fact that we want to keep it as an ongoing thing to make sure that we do the best we can for the guys that are farming down there to be able to get their material in and out. Um, when we met with the Ag Commission last year, that was one of the things we discussed was fall and spring maintenance. And I believe last year we had a conversation if we were, had to do it once a year, what would be the preference? I think it was spring they asked for last year, if I remember right. Uh, so we went down there and did um, Old Ferry Road, uh, part of Rainbow Road, that's Public Way, uh, Riverbank Road. Um, I'm not sure if we got over to Hockman Road or not to do that side of the meadows or not. But we did what I felt comfortable with as doing as public ways and left the other roads alone. It's our hope that we can get it done twice a year, but I didn't make that commitment last year. I made a commitment to do it at least once, but we can definitely try to get it twice. Uh, we have a, uh, a 1981 grader that we're working with that has problems with it, and that's our only piece of equipment we have to be able to grade the Meadows Roads. So, uh, you know, a new grader is in the order of $300,000 to replace that. But I talked to Richie about maybe the pitch to this is that we rent a grader for two weeks in the spring and the fall for you know two, three, four thousand dollars or there is that rental period and get that work done without damaging our old more fragile grader with the work down there. There's a lot of uh, deep pop holes that could swallow yeah. a car down <laughs> yeah. there. That's right. They're huge and to move that kind of volume of dirt, especially from the surrounding field to bring that back in because if the vehicles through it, they push it out into the fields. And so trying to draw that material in, because the only way you're going to get rid of those 
hulls, you've got to basically tear the road down to the bottom of it and rebuild it back up. Otherwise, they just keep on reforming. So that is our goal, to get down there twice a year. Last year, we were only given to do it once last year. Is it easier in the spring because the ground is, tends to be wetter? Um, depends when we hit it. We want to make sure that spring flooding is well gone because we don't want to go in there and grade it and find out that the Connecticut River rose and we have an issue down there again and have to go back again. So we probably want to get down there until, I imagine, late April, if not May, to make sure we're outside of that normal flood season that we have. And in the fall, we can do it almost any time. I'm not sure what what the critical harvest time is in the fall. Is it what September? Is it October? Is it November? Probably uh, the potatoes will start end of August and some, maybe September to kind of be in the middle for people. legal thing as far as bringing in anything to fill those three and four foot It's holes. illegal to bring in fill <coughs> due to, uh, it's the, in the 100 year flood plan. Oh, 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 okay. <coughs> there's no, there's no Not unless leeway we, or whatever you well, want to Well, there is leeway. If we were to bring fill in, we'd have to make compensatory storage somewhere in the meadows to take material out. Okay. Yeah. That's that's Conservation Commission rules and state regulations. Because it is so hard that, that, that there are holes I'm not kidding, you can't get through even with a tractor or some of them, and, and it's, it's getting that bad. But it's, it's hard for the scrape or road grader to fill it. There's not enough material there to fill it. And, and the, you know, the, the vehicles, the four-wheel drives, and everything else carries, you know, tires to take things out over the, over, over the years. That's just is what has happened. So. Are there any <coughs> grants or agricultural governmental funds available that could pay for some engineering to figure out any of this or if we could I'll bet you that I'll bet you this could happen if, if there was I mean, we, we could even go before the Conservation Commission to discuss matter of fact we've invited a member of the Conservation Commission to come to our next meeting okay but I'll bet you dollars to donuts that if if we we might even be able to get some fellas to donate some gravel I'm just speaking without asking, but if we could do that, I'll bet you there might be some willingness to, to get a little gravel down there in a, in a couple of spots. I'm not sure. Right. Well, but you know. it'd be important that the Conservation Commission is on board. Well, absolutely. And the, comp the compensatory uh, excavation would have to occur somewhere. I, I went to a uh, regional ag commission uh, meeting of the Ag Commissions of Massachusetts last Saturday down in uh, Sturbridge. And they, I, I attended a seminar on, the, on wetlands uh, in particular, and I was very farming in wetlands. And they're adamant down there. Matter of fact, they have a legal uh, person for the Mass Ag Commission's advisor, at least. And he was adamant that you are allowed to maintain farm roads in wetland areas. Now, that's what we probably should ask the Conservation Commission is what do they mean by maintenance, how far can we go with that. But we can get, I'm pretty sure we could get an opinion on that. And uh, we'd be glad to, you know, maybe... Yeah, I mean, that might be something that you could push from your end. But, uh, again, I mean, the whole purpose of us being here is to keep the awareness before the board of the fact that... And I think a lot of it's budget constraints over the years and just simply not having the time, but it's gotten to the point where it's, it's, it's so bad that somehow we've got to correct it. Yeah. Um, I believe there are exemptions in the Wetlands Protection Act for doing agricultural work in, in or near around wetlands. I wouldn't classify the meadows as being a wetland, it's in the floodplain, which is another different category. So I'm not sure how that would happen down there. Plus there's also areas down there that are underneath the jurisdiction of uh, Natural Heritage Program and Endangered Species um, too. So there's a couple different regulatory agencies involved with work down in the meadows. Uh, yeah, just talking about filling the craters, and I don't think that the compensatory storage issue is if you were going to fill a, a large pothole in the road and bring it up to the grade of the road. I don't think that's an issue. I think if you were going to raise 
the elevation of the road for some length from the compensatory storage issue would become something that we would need to find from the commission for. But I mean, clearly, this overlay of things as Ned's indicating here that that, be checked. that would be really helpful. I mean, and the idea is not to raise the road; it's just to get get <coughs> get, well, get it up some. If the <laughs> agricultural commission could do some uh, a little um, work on the on that side of it, I think it would make it a little easier for us to just send send a, a truck and a grader and I think that's we don't want to run afoul of right. okay. other okay. regulations. Or. I think that's something we'd be glad to do. So you have some homework. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good for the spring? Yes. We'd be happy to keep talking about the fall. Uh, and if you could bring us back some feedback about bringing in gravel for those potholes. I'm sure the stuff that's off to the side of the road must be like powder. I'm sure it is, and it's probably in the mix with the loam in the fields when they till it over and it's basically gone. Right. You're not going to really achieve it unless you start taking the material from the fields. Okay. The biggest problem is when you get the four wheelers that are going through there and you're trying to see how fast they can go through the water and it just spreads it in such a, a, yeah. a you know, white, you know, I'm sure on their vehicles it's yeah. falling away too. And if you pick it up your hand, it's just like right. powder. It's, mm. it's, mm -hmm. it's got no, no guts. I'll tell no you, when, when the graders went down last year, it, I'll tell you, you could notice a, a difference. It, it was good. And um, so it was a good thing. And, uh, but they just need to keep on top of it. Thank you for coming. Thank you. For Thank you. Uh, so, do you want a motion to move out of order? I do, I would. I would move we would move out of order and take up um, item number four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So, this is a discussion uh, about the um, possibility of recommending that the City Council accept Glendale Avenue as a, an official city street. So just uh, to recap while she's getting the language, if the board votes to recommend that the city council accept the street, the final decision is the city council's. But if, if we vote that the, we would, would recommend a particular street be accepted, at that point the city would begin to pay for surveying and the legal work to create a whole package that can be taken intact to the city council. I think it's reasonable to assume that after all of that work and expense, probably the city council will approve it. <laughs> you said Glendale. No, that's the first one. Uh, Glendale Avenue. Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. Where? Yeah, no, I know there's numerous so there's streets. Yeah. Here no, I'm here. Yes. You should also explain the fact that if you have a no recommendation on the city council. Mm -hmm. The city council can still direct the board to create layout plans to accept that as a public way. Because they might they have the ultimate authority to say yay or nay on yes. this. That's true, like you said. Okay. Um, all right, so any, any you want to start talking? Well, do we have a petition for Glendale Avenue? We do. Yes, all of those. Everyone we went to on this past Saturday we had, a petition. had a petition and it had been referred to us by the City Council. So that was those were all the official hearings for those individual streets. Was it a, uh, a um, resident petition or one that we, we created there? I think we created it. We created it. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, I've looked at the criteria that we use as a guideline. Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion on the table? Well, we don't we don't, we don't necessarily have, have a motion. I mean, oh, okay. we're discussing whether to make oh, a motion. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Sorry. let's think about that. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that works better. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so I've looked at these general guidelines that we use. Um, 
help us determine whether or not uh, a way um, could possibly become public or whether, um, in our view, it should continue as a private way. And as I look at Glendale Avenue, it seems to me the number of criteria, um, including access to Conservation Commission land in the rear. And so um, I'd be inclined to recommend um, to the City Council that it be accepted as a public way. I would, I would agree with that because of the, also the number of residents and the, width, the fact that it's a two-way street, it's, the width is adequate and uh, it's reasonably paved as, and I think the access to the conservation issue is, conservation land is probably considered to be a critical issue even if it's not a little piece of land, it's, it's got to be open. So, uh, do we have a motion? <coughs> um, these are all negatives. Well, it's a, th that was actually the trickier one. We're looking for a motion right. that the Board of Public Works recommend to the City Council that, that the City Council accept the street. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? Yes. It needs to. All in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Glendale Avenue? Aye. Aye. Uh, next uh, discussion vote on, the, on a rec making a recommendation for Church Street. Um, the Church Street is between King Street next to the. Uh, oh, no, we've, yeah, we, we, right. we've already done yeah, this before. I was just going to point out that we took a, a non binding vote after our original visit to the Church Street site. And Uh, I move that we recommend that the City Council accept Church Street as a public way. Second. Any further thoughts? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, do, now, discussion to make a recommendation for Bright Avenue. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting here. Um, it's in the Ward 4, yeah. about two thirds of the way down. It was. Um, Street is Bright Avenue off of Bright Street. Bright Street. Bright, Bright, Street. Bright, Bright, Street. Bright Street. Avenue is off of Bright Street. By the Sheldon mm -hmm. Coffee Roasters, I think it is, King yeah. uh, Street. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. right. Well, I thought this was this one was a challenge in my view. Um, it meets some of the criteria that we're using for becoming a public way, but um, it, it, it didn't meet enough of them so that I, it, it seems to me that it's more suited to be um, a private way. Okay. Um, in the files when reviewing this particular private way, I believe it was the board minutes in 1960, they were instructed by city council to create a layout for this street, and for whatever reason, it never happened. There was a petition back in 1959 and 1960 to make this a public way, and when they gave the instruction to the city engineer to create a layout, from what I can find, it never happened. Just so the board's aware of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I noted that um, from the visit, but what I forgot to ask was, do we know if that direction from the city council came from the city council itself, or was it the result of um, a resident petition? My understanding was from a resident petition. Okay. <coughs> Any yeah, we were talking about the, um, the little street by Shelburne Falls Coffee Roasters. There's that street connecting uh, King Street and State. Right. And then, and then the, the, little, the, street, the little right. spur off of that. Right. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to note that uh, some of the residents that were there at the hearing had indicated that that little street was used quite commonly by uh, members of the public or people that parked there, that people that didn't live on the street. It was certainly wide enough. Yeah, it was yeah. really, really, really. And 
then there were signs asking people not to park there. <laughs> it sucked. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. It, 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 it's a challenging, it it's is a challenging one. Right. Right. There, were there, am I right, there were two street, two houses at the end? There were yes. four residences. Four residences. Four houses on this one. Although two of the bright street houses use it to get access to the back of it. Right, and then two more in the back. Yeah. That's right. That's no, one. Two, I think so there was there's, two, there's two on Bright Ave and two that abut Bright and Street and Bright Avenue. So there's a total of six abutters there. Okay. One, two. I can think of at least three residences there was, yes, not right. on Bright Street. Right. There's the little house mm -hmm. that had the, uh, the, the so sticking out part. Right. The, so the bathroom and then the couple, then mm -hmm. the other house and then the couple. So right. it might have been four. It might have four. It might have four. I have four, I have four there too. Four on the, uh, and two on the right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Four. Yeah. four and two. It is a hard one. It is a hard one. Um, the beacon, I guess, I know we want to try to get to yes, but. Does the uh, fact that the city council had sort of said yes at an earlier point? Yeah, well, that was the point of my question, which was whether the city council was driving there or was the result of the motion from, from residents. Right. Well, city council. The, 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 the city council approved the request for a layout to the you know, survey. True. True. Yeah. So yep. It, it yep. sounds like it was favorable. You're right. Up to that point, at least. You're right. That's the difference. And I don't think the layout, and a layout yeah. you're right. presents a problem. It's pretty evident. Ned, should we move to a different street, or is that no, something fine. that's fairly close at hand? I think it's fairly close at hand. <clears throat> Was the board obligated to follow the recommendation from the 1960 City Council? Yeah. No. <laughs> so what I have in my notes here yeah. from Deed Research and Board of Public Works meeting, all Deed's reference this way is Bright Street Avenue. And all the deeds on this private way convey rights of way known as Bright Street Avenue, as city water and sewer. 1960 Board of Public Works meeting minutes that reference street acceptance petition from city council be undertaken by the city engineer. I cannot find any other documents on this matter. So we don't know who proposed it, even, and we don't know what, why there was no disposition. I have no idea. But they still approved the idea of moving the head on. Mm -hmm. I have the notes here. It was June 13, 1960, and it says petitions from City Council for acceptance of Bright Avenue and Merrick Lane were received. It was voted that they referred to the City Engineer for acceptance processing. Sounds like they accepted it and mm -hmm. uh -huh. just paperwork yeah. didn't yeah. follow through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's another note here of July 11, 1960. It was voted to approve the petition of residents of Bright Avenue for street acceptance and refer this to the city engineer for process. I think that was probably the same, same thing. Uh, different meetings, though. Mm. So they did it several times. And then in another meeting, it was copies of reports from the planning board to the city council recommending the acceptance of Carpenter Ave and Bright Avenue were received and read. So it looks like the process was moving towards that and. I don't know what happened in 1960 and why it never moved forward from there. Kennedy got elected and then everything fell apart. <laughs> well, it was also the year that the the DPW was created and they were moving and maybe things got overwhelming with consolidation of water, sewer, highway, and All right. I, I don't know. That's right around the time Teddy Kennedy crashed and was taken to Cooley Dickinson. That's right. It's just orchards. So, um, would anyone care to make a motion about this? You got the words. Well, I, I guess as I listened to the discussion, I, I was borderline to begin with the, the action of the in the 1960s um, was almost enough to sway me to um, accept it as a public law. So, um, I move that uh, the BPW recommend acceptance of Bright Avenue as a public way. 
I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Bright Avenue. Aye. Uh, next is discussion on uh, making a recommendation for Edwards Square. I would again observe that this is uh, a street that during a prior, prior nine binding deliberation, the Board of Public Works voted to recommend acceptance. So I'll move that we do the same. Okay. I'll second second. And any further thoughts? All in favor of re-recommending that the City Council should accept Edwards Square. Uh, okay, so so we have three pieces of Bradford Street here. Uh, this is the the Comcast offices are here. Uh, this this is a public way. Yes. Um, so it goes the, to the industrial park. Right. So the. This section here is north, right? That's correct. And that's the first one we're discussing. Um, and the city would like to build a, a sewer interceptor pipe from the industrial park down this route. Is that correct? That's correct. And where the elbow bend is then becomes... Uh, well, Bradford the railroad tracks are here. Yeah. So parallel... Yeah. This Stretch parallel to the this is, this is the extension, I believe. Let me, yeah. let me correct that. Um, it's all known as Bradford Street. There is no true north-south extension. That's what we call it in GIS for clarity. Ah. It's all just Bradford Street. All the addresses down there have a Bradford Street number, not Bradford Street South. But we're doing it for clarity because it's a it's kind of a mess down there, the streets. And so from... The industrial park, the, the street, Bradford Street as we know it, in the industrial park, from there north is what we call Bradford Street North. From here north? Yes. Okay. And the little dog leg oh. underneath is what we call Bradford Street South, where the two houses are. Okay. Just the dog leg. Yeah. That's south, that's correct. Okay. Well, that's what we were saying. That's north. That's a little different. That's a little okay. different. And then this is the extension? That's right. That would connect to oh, that's close. Uh, Woodmont Road. And the rail trail is here. Right. And Woodmont Road is just south of there. So that's what we call the extension. Gotcha. Okay. So we are now talking about north. North, yes. And where does the proposed pipeline go? So, yep. The north piece and the extension piece. Yes, and then continues down Woodmont. And it goes to the pump station. Oh, it goes right to here? The, that's correct. Okay. It would seem to me that if we accept north, we have, we have to accept the extension. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. somebody had to say it. <laughs> but the extension's easy to accept, right. in my view, because it's true and it carries a lot of traffic and all that. Right. It's um, the northerly piece and the southerly piece that, um, uh, because it serves so few residents, mm -hmm. we normally would question whether or not it should be a public way. Yeah. If we didn't take the north, uh, Bradford Street North, as I call it, uh, we would require to get an easement for the sewer line to go through there. Because currently it's all private property. If we took it as a public way, we, that easement requirement would disappear. And it's most practical to put the pipes under the pavement. In a public way, it makes sense. Yeah. Also, the, uh, the north part of it is somewhat wider than the south. That's correct. The, the, the south one is clearly a one-way street, and, and the other one is marginally a two-way. Mm -hmm. uh, a portion of the north also provides access to commercial property. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. There are two commercial properties, it looks like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. There aren't multiple residences, however. There are only two. 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 
and it's not a, the north extension is not a through street. It's not used by non-residents. Uh, for business purposes, it is. Oh, right. I'm more inclined to be positive about this compared to the some of the others. We did have some signal from the neighbor who is at that corner where it shuts to the right, mm -hmm. who's concerned about how the layout might impact the crop. Mm -hmm. Separate pieces? We, they're listed on the agenda, I guess, separately. Well, I would, uh, I mean, obviously, this is the tough one. Um, if someone felt that north and the extension where the uh, interceptor pipe's going to go, could be, you could make a motion to take them together. All right, I move that uh, the board recommend acceptance of. Uh, so called Bradford Street Extension and Bradford Street North as uh, public works. I'll second that. Yeah. I think they need to be separate votes, not combined. All right. I oh. recommend that the board consider acceptance of so called Bradford Street North as a public way. I'll second that. Any further discussion? So, all in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Bradford Street North? Aye. 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 I recommend that the city, uh, the board recommend to the city council that Brad, so called Bradford Street extension be accepted as public. I'll second that. Aye. Well, I, I think it's just so narrow uh, that it's just not reasonable to, to consider it to be a public street. It meets very few of the criteria that we're using as a guideline, and we faced other decisions on these criteria that need to be consistent. So, um, I recommend. Something like in our opinion. The, uh, well, the vote goes along something along the lines that the Board of Public Works has evaluated so called Bradford Street South, and we feel that this private way does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city, city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Discussion about Bradford Street South. So, all in favor of the motion that it does not need reasonable standards to become a city street. Aye. 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 Okay, yes vote is does not need. Yes, Aye. 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 Uh, so, okay. Discussion now. Uh, next is discussion about re uh, making a recommendation on Isabella Street. I would again observe that on a previous occasion, the Board of Public Works voted in a nine binding resolution to accept, recommend acceptance of Isabella Street as a public way. I'll second that. Okay. And move that we do so again. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Any additional thoughts? All in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Isabella Street. Aye. 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 And next uh, for discussion is whether we should make a recommendation for Center Court.
imagine a layout in there that will let you get the plows in and out? Uh, I mean, do you leave berms against the houses when you go in there? We push snow where we can get it to, uh -huh. and then plow our way out. Uh, Center Court also has well-known drainage problems that uh, are in the process, I think, of being looked at being corrected. Um, if this became a public way, I'm sure that we'd be held to a standard to correct the problems that exist out there right now. At the, the site viewing, we requested some plans that uh, showed their proposal for a layout. I was wondering if you'd receive those. I have plans from Mr. Anders and from uh, Ms. Gave, but they don't show any proposed layout. They show an estimated where the limits of the private way are on these plans, with their property lines intersecting through it and around it. And is there, do you recall the width of the layout for the private way? It should be here. Was this something that came in recently, Ned? Right after the, uh, yeah. it was dropped off by okay. Monday on, on my desk okay. after the public hearing. Okay. okay. So they In this list here, there is a center court 15 feet wide. Ward 4, the third one down on the list. We have it listed in our cards as approximately 200 feet in length and 15 feet wide. Is that what that plan should be? The plan. I didn't take a scale to it, but I think it's approximate. They kind of measured where they think it was in relation to, because there's a center line property line that goes from between the old Elks building and the next building over, and it's basically right up the center between the two. So they're just offsetting, they assume, seven and a half feet each direction of that center line. And coming up through, then it makes a sweeping bend into the court itself. Would it Sorry, well, I just wanted to verify all the information on the private wide criteria. There's no city utilities. There's city water. City water, okay. Um, we're talking about the width right now. Um, dedicated to few buildings. It does have several buildings, but it, they're all sort of weaving in and out. Parking lot or undefined limits built in, and I don't know that this is a good criteria, but it is similar to other private ways. Um, it's not through street. I don't know how much it's used by non-residents, but there are clients that come to the building. Mm -hmm. I would say it's used by non-residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, lane, there's really no, uh, there's not really two lanes. I don't think they're too much. And yeah. historical recreation, land scene, abuses, and public good. Can you, can the staff, can you imagine a layout that would work? Uh, for example, 15 feet is pretty skinny, I think. Pretty nominal for two cars to pass. The minimum you probably need is 16 to 18 feet. Even then, it's kind of tight with mirrors. It's we can make it longer. You can make it wider. I mean, you can do a layout that's wider than 15 feet. Well, certainly our easement will be wider than that, and be longer than the length of it too, because the water line extends back into the property quite a ways. I think past the 200 foot length of center, center court. Is it reasonable to ask the staff to think about this a little bit? I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to... My, my concern is that there are known issues out there and if it becomes a public way, we accept those inherent responsibilities to fix those. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. The biggest concern with this way and we've been historically following it for years. We 
we dealt with it. Um, it's not probably one of our most easy streets to plow or ways to plow, but we get it done. Well, as I look at this, it, it just doesn't need the standards to become a public way. And, and it's, it's really the width of the, the way, whether it's public or private. And then it's this whole issue about management of the snow and uh, competing goals. You're trying to plow the way into the parking lots, and the parking lots are trying to get rid of the snow. And it's, it's similar to some other private ways that we've looked at where the way and the parking are not discrete. It's just one right, so. one area, and um, I, I I just don't think it meets. You know, I, I recognize that it's got commercial properties, but I just don't think the city really belongs in there trying to do snow removal. The way I look at that. Now, I would echo that. I, to me, it's reminiscent of park mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, it, my one, my one bit of hesitation is the is the the substantial amount of, of commercial use. Can you just elaborate on that? Well, I mean, at at the time of our visit, the reaction I got from a couple of people I spoke to is that primarily it's a non-resident use. Mm -hmm. uh, that the access is non-resident use. Mm -hmm. um, if it was you know solely resident use, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate. But the fact that there are people going in there. Um, where services are being provided, uh, you know, a certain amount of access, uh, I think is uh, is necessary. But I, but I'm with Mike that I'm not, I'm not even sure I find that that portion of it compelling. It's just the one place where I find hesitation. Otherwise, for me, I will be having problems. With it. I'm not sure how I feel about it being uh, the relevance of, of your yeah. your statement. I'm not sure. I'm not no, 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 uh, either yes. way. I'm not sure either. But I, I do feel uncomfortable because the feel, the feel for me is that it's a, it's a parking lot, and that's the feel for me. I, you know, I, it's, it adds to our, the benefit of our downtown area. It, you know, there's, um, the that place that that sort of cul-de-sac, as it were, has a lot of different buildings in it that have a function, some private, but there are residential in there as well. And I think it's a similarity to other private ways that concerns me in the fact that it's like a big parking lot. I agree. I also think that the, the historic drainage problems that we have, I mean, I know we've been visited by the abutters, the neighbors down the property owners before, and I echo your concern. Although the city is trying to encourage infill, I think. Um, I mean, isn't that one of the goals to mm -hmm. increase concentration and in the? Yes, but in places that can accommodate it. Mm -hmm. And if we, I mean, part of the goal about infill is to have people not have need cars so much. So there seems the cars in that space are really <laughs> sort of the thing that's creating the problem right. or the challenge. You're fresh. <laughs> oh, I got all those thoughts. I, I, I'm not going to say anything different. I, it's a difficult spot. And I appreciate the infill. I, I actually kind of like it. It's a nice little neighborhood. But uh, I think it's uh, the kind of place for snow removal that you, you'd want to have a private contractor that is plowing and removing at the same time. We can't do that. All we can do is push it in and back up and push it in some more. Uh, and then, point. how do you, where, where are the property lines? Who's, uh, you know, it's the kind of place because of the way it's been developed, I think that requires a community, like a neighborhood committee. Uh, we have a Bay State Village Association, which is pretty broad, but I can really narrow it down. That one little spot needs sort of some uh, concentrated. Um, effort that everyone can agree to in that one locale. For us as a third party to sort of, you know, make some rules, it's never going to work, I don't think. I also think of the plowing, that it, it looks like it needs plowing that uh, includes a little more
more finesse than the equipment that we would typically use when we're trying to play with it. You have to plow and remove almost at the same time. I want to like to, to make the commercial aspect like, work. It just seemed like it would be a challenge for our, our regular equipment to get in. Yeah. You're right, plow and remove, but also. So I'm, I'm sensing we're going to go for that, that other motion. If you want a motion tonight. No, at one point you were... Well, I was kind of staff. inquiring, of, you know, do you... I'm not, I'm not hearing from that end of the table yet. Let us sink our teeth into this. <coughs> um, like I said, I have some concerns over our future liabilities out there and cost of fixing the problems that are in there that currently aren't our issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to remember, too, that these are all residential homes a number of years ago that have been started and commercialized over the years into, I believe it's uh, lawyer offices and doctor's offices, things of that nature down mm -hmm. there. So it was moved from a residential area to more of a commercial. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's any parts of any of the buildings left are resident. I really don't know. Yeah, okay. I think there was one that was just renovated to six by eight. All right. Well, I have a motion. Um, I move that the <coughs> board is evaluated center court, and we feel that this private way does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway starting in FY14. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of that recommendation, that, uh, that motion. Uh, aye. aye. Uh, next uh, discussion of making a recommendation on Cosmian Avenue. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Um, one of my colleagues on the board note, noted that this met more of the criteria for acceptance as a public way than some of the public ways that were already on the book. Um, Many. <laughs> and with that thought in mind, I move that we accept uh, Cosmian Avenue. Uh, recommend we move. I move that we recommend to the city council that they accept Cosmian Avenue as a as a public way. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Cosmian Ave. Aye. 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 Okay, next, uh, discussion about making, uh, possibly making a recommendation on Warner Row out of Leeds. <clears throat> well, I thought this one was uh, borderline and could go either way. Um, it meets... Um, a number of the criteria that we've used as, we're using as a guideline uh, to determine whether or not a way should be public or not. Um, uh, there was discussion in the during our site viewing of maybe extending if it became a public way, extending it to the rail trail, um, which I think would then convince me that it really should be a public way. And I think we're trying to establish connecting points to. Um, but even if that didn't happen, it does meet quite a number of the criteria. So I, I'd like to hear what the other board members think, but I'd be inclined to um, recommend approval. My only concern is, not my only concern, I, I think this is another problematic one, but do you remember that the last one we had in January, Edward Terrace, mm -hmm. that abutted Veterans Field? Mm -hmm. Didn't we vote? to not move that board, to accept mm -hmm. that as a private way. And this is like, to me, very similar to that. You know, it's, it's one's um, so housing on one side, narrow. Um, uh, I, I, I like the idea of attaching it to the bike path. I'm, I'm right there with that. But there was just, um, there was no two-way, what? Well, I was asking them what the width was. Oh, yeah, what is the width? Is it really 30 feet? I, I thought that it was different. I thought
Thunder Width issue is noticeable. There's that tree on Edgewood that was particularly. Well, wet Edgewood was like 10 feet or something. At the narrow point where the tree was. Right. Yeah. There's a plan from 12 feet. 12, 12. 1917 that doesn't give a width of it, but they show a width of what it looks like. Um, basically, one row goes across seven house lots that are there. As far as Mike's concerned about connectivity to the rail trail, it'd have to be an easement from National Grid to get up the bank to the rail trail. So that would have to happen as a uh, public easement then to make that option work. I was going to say it couldn't be done, but it could. But I'm still not hearing the width. I don't have Maybe a width of it. Okay. it. It seemed to me the two vehicles could pass mm -hmm. in there. I, I drove down in there yeah. and turned around. It, it's tight, but I think two vehicles could pass. I, well, I think if there were no cars parked, Two vehicles could pass, but I think I think the number of residences requires <coughs> parking on the street, uh -huh. certainly at many times. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very I think the width is a limitation. Our, our cards show a 30 foot width by 300 feet in length, but I have not found any D description that describes the 30 foot right away for pass and repass to all the residents that live on that way. So I'm not sure how the 30 feet came into play. Was there? I, I believe I remember right, there's a concrete bound on the west side of it that's delineating the neighbor's property on that side. But I don't know what delineates on the uh, east side of the roadway as we know it. It's in the living rooms. Probably. Um, and the city did in 19 or 2002 or three put some new utilities in and paved it. Some burn and all this. The city does a bang up job plowing it now, and um, we manage to get all our we all get our cars off the street when that happens. There mm -hmm. is adequate parking for each person home to park off the street. Either they park on Florence Street, uh, the first house has um, a driveway off of Florence Street, the rest of us manage to get off the street. Um, so that we can, we're not parked anywhere else except right. in yeah, our driveway. Two-way traffic, most all the time. And we have a fire hydrant at the end of it, at the end at of the, the street. Right. And the only other thing I would add is the general public is unaware that there's any issues about the end lot. So we do have a lot of traffic to the rail trail. All the time. Already. Both public well, parking yeah, on the they street. Can, they can park up there. They park, well they park on a street. Right. And go up. And then they go up. Or they walk in. So there's a lot of traffic okay. in the warmer months. And dog the... walking and bicycling. <clears throat> um, while we were there, I, I and a couple of the other board members discussed the potential for widening it. And my recollection is that, um, and this is not to say that the city would do, do be in a position to do so, but that without moving utility poles and Property owners own land on both sides of the road, so I suspect an easement wouldn't be an issue. Um, but without moving utility poles, my estimate was you could get about four feet. Um, now, I don't know if that's you know enough to solve concerns about width amongst my colleagues, but um, there is there is a little bit of wiggle room. But again, you know that assumes that the city has the wherewithal well to do it. So, we were looking for some kind of a motion. This is not one of the easier ones. Not like Isabella. <laughs> or, oh, it's a cosmic. The only other thing I would add is that the snow is pushed to the end of the street. So there's no loading out of the snow. And that's it's fine. been forever that way. And it's not an issue. Motion, Meister, would you? Uh, oh, um, oh, 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 wait, hold on. Just so the board know, also at the end of there's house number 12, one in a row, and even the roadway layout stops well before that. Our water line continues on that private property to a hydrant 
We also have a 12 inch water line that runs at the toe of the bank of the rail trail out there also. So potentially this could serve another access point. I'm sure we have an easement for the water line, but provide an access point to that 12 inch main in the future. Just a comment. So we have a water main that runs along the base of that? Yes. Um, I move that uh, the board recommend to the city council that Warner Road be accepted as a public way. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And we are trying to say yes. We are trying to say yes. Yeah. Is it because we didn't serve hot chocolate? No. He doesn't uh, speak for the whole board. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are we, what do you think? Are you ready then? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> a yes vote is that we will recommend that the city council accept Warner Row. All in favor of the motion? Uh, aye. aye. Uh, and then That's finally, we have to change the street sign though because it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pick it off on our way back. Tonight. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the, the end of the private ways. Okay. I mean, you're welcome to stay for the crack sealer. <laughs> you won't be miffed if you don't. No, no, I, other people have left when we get into the. You don't change your opinion. No, no. Okay. The next time the city council, when, when will that? All right, so the, so the, the, the next oh, yeah, part has an indeterminate timeline. We, they have allowed, uh, they have appropriated $25,000 for legal and survey, survey work. Uh, we don't think that that's enough money to reach even to your, where you are in the line. So, um, and even if money were not an issue, we're not quite sure how long the process will take. Uh, so it could be some months before you'll see a surveyor out in, in front of you. Street. And you've gotten your upgrade for this century. So. Yeah, we figured that. <laughs> our our well, goal is to work our way through the entire list uh, by sometime this summer. So that everything that we can do as our board has been done. And then does, do we get a letter or something that says that it's gone to the city council or something? I would say the next time you'll get an official correspondence would be after the city council has voted. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Really? You might true? want to contact your yeah. representative. Yeah. <laughs> you can look at their agenda. Yeah. The only other thing that we probably should do is we get in these private ways and the actual survey work, we probably should have rights of entry, especially on ways like this that are truly have no layout that we know of. That way, if you're given permission to <laughs> be there surveying, because Okay. Maybe surveying the, the oh. boundaries of the edges of the houses and right. picking up features there. So as they try to create a layout, they're not creating a layout that part of someone's porch. And <laughs> All right, so, so, on. so we should do that. So I would say that would probably be the, the next correspondence, even though we've always treated it kind of like as a public way. It really right. isn't. So. Okay. And well, we can talk about some more internally, but... So we should probably get those letters out to the four streets that are in the hopper already. He's basically doing, we believe the four streets that we gave him right now to review uh, predominantly can be done by deed research because they're pinned and bounded like there is a public way or a street mm -hmm. in the middle of them. Okay. So we think the actual on-ground survey work is going to be nominal at best for the four that we have, which is uh, Edwards Church, Isabella, and Strawberry Hill, which you haven't voted on yet. Okay. Okay. So Thank you. You want Appreciate that? it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, so, uh, falls here. Could we take a number one informational out of order? Can I do a, a motion? Make a motion that we take old business number one out of order. Old no, business or informational? informational. Oh, I'm sorry. Informational. informational. Uh, I make a motion that we take number one informational out of order. Second. Okay. All right. Aye. Uh,
Uh, there's been, um, I don't know, did, would everyone have seen some of the recent correspondence? There's so, been. There's I saw one letter there. today. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, Jesse Adams has written about it. Um, Councilor Labarge has written about it. Um, he's here this evening. So there's been some um, concerns raised about our plans to cl essentially close down Glendale Road, except for very specific occasions. Glendale Road. Glen the, the transfer station. Not transfer station, but uh, the dump. Dump. Yes. So would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, then? my name is uh, Ted Mulcahy, and um, I have a small property maintenance business. And I guess I'm here speaking on behalf of other businesses that serve the local community um, you know, in the form of uh, brush uh, removal, leaf removal, um, uh, general landscaping. Um, you know, with the advent of the closing of the uh, of the landfill, we don't have access to uh, to dump brush, and we really need uh, a place to dump brush. There's no place to do it, and the concern is is that there's going to be. I mean, people are going to look for places to dump it. There's going to be illegal dumping. There are consequences to not having a place to dump leaves and brush. Um, and I know it's a very complicated issue. I live in South Hampton. They don't take brush there either. Um, but I guess I'm just here in the hopes that uh, an exception can be made to include, um, you know, local maintenance and landscaping businesses so that we have a place to also dump the brush. There's a minimum fee of uh, five dollars if you go over the scale. Um, I, I know that, that um, you know these companies would be willing to pay more. You could you could up the minimum fee to ten dollars. You could up the uh, um, the amount you pay per tonnage. Um, you know, there would be certainly be a willingness to, to um, compensate whatever cost uh, uh, you, whatever costs uh, the town would have to um, make uh, in order to um, in order to take this on. I guess is what I'm trying to say. We talked about this as we were talking about the, uh, the plan to close down the landfill and whether or not we could find a way to. I mean, we raised concerns about local landscapers and what they might be doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we well, our line of reasoning was uh, we were headed we were headed toward providing services for residences only and not commercial properties, and that started from the very broad view of solid waste and trash. We, we didn't feel that we had an obligation to provide trash disposal for commercial businesses in the industry. Um, and then we recognized that landscapers, smaller businesses, are a subset of that that's a little more difficult to handle. Um, we also don't want to operate the scale. Um, and so then that left us with another challenge of, of um, how, do you, how do you charge? A fair price, you're not going to run the scale. And then I, I guess we've already been called on this, but we're also hoping to not open it up um, every week of the growing season, do fall and spring and fall periods, and then do it one day a week as a way to try to control costs. Um, so that's how we got to where we are. It's not to say we can't change, but that was how we got to where we are. But do I understand what you're saying? That it's still going to be open on Saturday? For, for all types of difficult to manage waste. And then leaf and yard waste on very specific Saturdays in the spring and fall, if I remember. I think it was 18 days or 18 Saturdays it would be open. Okay. And so That'd we've be been covered. contacted by one resident that feels even for his own personal use, that's not enough days. He generates yard waste right, once that a week. Was that was the letter that we yeah. got today. And does brush and waste require a bulldozer to push it into piles or it keep it organized? It requires a bucket loader, but the wood waste would have to be chipped. So the small diameter wood waste would get chipped and sleep in grass clippings that go into composting. Chris? Um, so under the current plan, when we would receive yard waste, we would do it on the site, the main site there where you back in and you offload. That's the residential plan? That's residential. So um, when you run it across the scales, it doesn't go into the landfill, it goes around behind to the that receiving thing. And 
Isn't that the portion that's also accessible through the other gate? It is. Okay. I mean, I think I I don't think we need to do anything tonight, but I I, I see this as a as a sort of a, a a growing edge issue as people figure out what's going on. We may we will want to spend some more time thinking about how to mm -hmm. how to how to do it. Yeah. My concern is, I mean, I I'm not in the landscaping business, but. They used to landfill on a daily basis as they're doing their work. And all of a sudden, if we're only open on Saturdays, are they going to come in with truckloads and truckloads and reload their 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 material that they collected all week long? I don't know how you would do that as a business if we allowed commercial on Saturday. Would you? I don't, I don't know. know how. It, but yeah, some yeah. businesses would do exactly what you're saying. Others, I don't know what they do. Well, at least. The willingness to pay for it is, sure. is critical here, and, and, and uh, it, the revenue may cover whatever extra expenses we would have to deal with these small contractors. So I think I, I think it's a direction we ought to try to move in, see if we can see enough revenue to make it carry itself. Jim. Um, just a comment about the basic question of the types of services that the city should be obligated to provide to companies like this gentleman's company and, and others. There's a whole sea change coming when the landfill closes, and you have to evaluate every aspect of the services that the city provides and ask the question, is this a, is this a service that the city of Northampton should be providing, commercial service? I think there's some general feeling that um, this, what's happening in Northampton has happened across the state over the last 20 years. Many communities have had exactly the same situation we had, and then they stopped running commercial types of composting facilities, and then it presents an opportunity that may be unseen at the moment for the private sector to step in, for someone to say, well, you know, I have a gravel pit, or I have this or that. I'd be happy to take five bucks or a load or whatever for you to drop your leaves off here. And I think that that solution has may, maybe not made itself available for people to recognize, like where the heck am I going to bring this stuff, but I think there's a certain sense that where there's, an, where there's a business opportunity that the private sector will pick up and, and solve that particular problem without the city having to jump in and get into sort of a commercial scale you know, service. I think Jim makes a good point. I also think that there's a possibility of a reuse factor or a um, recycling factor, and that we, there are several groups that have come into our area that want to do different kinds of um, composting or uh, what we've seen two examples. One was, a, I'm not remembering the specific charges, but where it would use yard waste to funnel um, a, um, a comp, uh, uh, the regeneration. Digest, what? The anaerobic digester. The anaerobic digester, and, and then there's also a... Kojo. A Kojo, yeah. And a co-generator. And so I'd like to think, and these are our private air, private um, opportun opportunities for private development. So in the reused recycling area, which I want, would like to see grow. Um, maybe there isn't enough for that, and that's a problem we understand, but if it's a possibility, um, should we be, should we, should we be in the business of the, the solid waste task force that the mayor um, did two years ago was so strongly about, no, we shouldn't be in this business, even though not all of us agreed to that. But um, that was the direction that we got politically. So, so I suspect this conversation will go on a little longer because um, Councillor Adams has asked it has asked the joint committee to circle back to it. Councilor Labarge has raised some concerns about it, which I'm sure will indicate we'll have some more conversation about it. Okay, all right. Um, I don't think it's anything we can solve this evening. Yeah, well, I just appreciate you hearing the issue and, um, you know, letting me speak. Yeah. I mean, in the sort of refuse that he's bringing is directly from yards. It's, it's a, a very small step from residential. When uh, when do you start mowing grass? Um, generally, uh, generally mid-April. Mid -April. Mid -April. A month from now. Yeah. Okay. But um, 
you know, I'm already getting some calls to pick up uh, debris from the winter. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. You know. Um, yes, Andres. Yes, I'm just Andres. curious. I mean, obviously we live in this part, but there's a, all around the state. What are there other locations that take the the, the lawn waste? I mean, there does East Hampton do it? Are there any other places that take in the yard waste? Take in this waste? That's you know, does yeah, South Hadley do it? In general, uh, I mean, uh, I think communities they compost uh, compostable material. But a lot of I, get, I think some of the small communities don't want to deal with um, or don't have the equipment to deal with uh, large brush. What about like the Chicopee landfill or South Hadley? Do they take in brush? I don't know. I'd have to look into it. Yeah. South okay. Hadley does. South Hadley does. So there is another opportunity for commercial. There may be. Businesses. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, we could do a little bit of research and find out facilities in neighboring towns or wherever that may be taking this sort of thing and make that type of facility listing available to people that are being impacted by the city's decision to close down a commercial operation. It's actually a good point. We can try to do that. I'm sure they'd be thrilled by that. Okay. Okay. Question for Ted. How many pickup loads a month would you bring if it were available? Um, I, I'm a smaller business. I have a, you know, an F-250 or a half-ton pickup. So, um, you know, as was discussed earlier, I'm I'm going in there. I mean, I have maybe I serve maybe uh, 35 residences in Northampton, and I'm going into the landfill bringing loads um, a at least a couple times a week, two times a week, maybe three times a week. There are businesses that do more than me and carry um, significantly bigger loads of yard debris. How many similar businesses are there? Oh God! Um, Six, twenty-six. Well, we have records of that actually, David, right? Because they go across the scale now. People have accounts, all that sort of thing. So if you want data, we'd be happy to, you know, we can produce that. For yeah. You. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's actually interesting. I mean, my guess would be there's a couple of dozen. You know. All right. Do we chart by the town for the or by the town for the work charges? We do for the commercial side. I think it's twenty-five dollars a ton. So and that's that's relatively cheap. Again, you know, um, if that were to increase, I don't think there'd be too many complaints, and I don't think customers would be too upset to have some of that cost passed on to them, as opposed to having nowhere to go. You know, um, and there's you know a lot of people I serve are older folks or um, folks who who don't have uh, um, the ability to get the material to the site. Um, you know, I mean, they uh, they'd be in trouble. Thank you very much. Okay, right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so let's circle back to the beginning. Contract for pavement crack sealing. I've been talking this up all night. <laughs> and, and yet there were no takers. <laughs> the amount of $22,000. So for the past, um, I believe, five years at this point, we've been uh, putting out $100,000 a year contracts for crack sealing. So uh, last year, I think only went to 75. This year, it's 22. So finally, within a five-year period, we cut off on our road maintenance for crack sealing, which is great. Uh, if we preserve the pavement for much longer than it currently is, basically, for those who don't know what it is, it's a uh, asphalt product with a fiber that gets filled in the cracks of the road so the water can't penetrate, and then freeze-thaw conditions start creating frost heaves and or potholes in the road. So we use Chapter 90 funds for this uh, type of work, and uh, we're finally getting caught up, which is great. And it's working as well as you had hoped? It is. I think we're getting a uh, longevity out of the road uh, due to that work, um, a reduction hopefully in potholes in the streets that we have done, um, but it's it's good, solid maintenance work. It's, as I put it, it's pennies on the dollar to spend for road maintenance. Is this the stuff that's like that wide? Yeah. yeah. Black snakes in the road. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And also, for some reason, it's where the snow melts the quickest. The, the portion of Burke's Pit Road that you guys recently top dressed, the, the hairpin turn, that was like three quarters crack sealer for a while. <laughs> then top dressed it with asphalt. Fabulous, by the way, if you're riding a bicycle. <laughs> On a sticky hot summer day? Well, that part wasn't so fabulous. But the new pavement is great. That's what I'm, that part, the oh, lower okay. part where you, you, there was really nothing. It was, you'd have to put um, truckloads of crack sealer to fix that problem. And so asphalt was 
what he did to say. So do we have a motion? Yes. yes. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor of approving the contract for crack yes. sealer to crack sealing? Aye. 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 Change order number one to contract 248-13 for emergency signal repair in the amount of $550. Move approval. Second. Um, this is from the accident that happened back in uh, February. A car came down and took out the traffic light controller at Route 66 and Florence Road. Uh, we got it underneath an emergency way with Joe Cook, the procurement officer, to get this work done. However, um, he has since then said we have to pay uh, state wage rates for the project. So this change order covers those state wage rates that would apply to a city construction project. I think the contract was without the wage rates. Um, Six thousand six hundred dollars. So the wage rates are at eight percent or so. Yeah. In this case. So it's mostly parts. Um, the cost to do the work itself, uh, the cost to have the prevailing wage rates was five fifty in the original contract. I don't have here, so I can't tell you, but it was parts and labor right. to correct it. But this just covers this just covers the increase in what we paid for labor to what we're supposed to pay for labor. That's correct. So it's just that. Okay. And that's like ten bucks an hour difference. Probably somewhere in that area. That's only more. fifty hours labor. Um, all right. So, all in favor of approving this change order to the contract? Aye. Water restriction policy. It's that time of year. The city engineer had hoped to have a revised policy available for board to review tonight, and uh, that is not available. Okay. But I would be happy to introduce to the board the concept that we need to revisit the water restriction policy again this year. Um, the details of the water restriction policy are based on the results of our annual statistical report that we do in, in the fourth DEP of the year. So um, the details of the policy are predicated on what our per capita use for water is. If our water per capita use goes down below a certain level, <coughs> then the, um, the types of restrictions that are required change. And we're sort of at that point where last year our work per capita water use um, went below a threshold level of the DEP. We can revisit the, the water policy and make some changes to that. So before the next meeting, I'll do a track changes of the current policy and email it to the board members so they can take a look and I'll be prepared to go through the details with you. But that's, uh, that, that was why this was on the agenda. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, old business, uh, private ways. Yes, so I sent the email out earlier today about future meetings for private ways and what we might be able to accomplish. There are a number of private ways that have petitions already in place that we could visit first. Uh, I also was able to get down to Mary Madura at the uh, City Council for next Thursday night for more public or private ways to be petitioned. So we can pick a number of those that we want to do at our next meeting. Uh, I spoke with Terry about our last meeting and the fact that we were rushed with time and didn't have time to do the certified mails. And really I told Terry that I need at least three weeks notice to get the certified mails out to these property owners going forward. So if we do something, we have to have ten days or seven days notice on the certified mail and then the work of staff to put this together. In the last private way hearings you went to, public acceptance hearings you went to, there was over ninety certified mails to do. And we were short of uh, account our uh, administrative staff that week and we just we couldn't get it done so we actually did door postings, door to door except for Isabella where we knew almost every single property in Isabella was a rental property. So we sent certified to the owners for those particular units. I just that that point came up um, I can't remember which street it was. One day. Yeah. 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 That uh, that we weren't reaching them because they were primarily renters. Uh, so you're saying three weeks? And so what we had strategized was that we would pick the next time, so you'll have plenty of time. So right now we're working on the budget process. What I'd like to do is look at the third week in April as a potential, which 
20. Around the 20th would be ideal for myself anyways. Mm -hmm. and Ski season will be turn. over. Well, I'm not worried about that. Not in Utah. Are you going to Utah? I think that's skis. Not for skiing, to visit Grandma. <laughs> when are you going? Uh, 15th to the 21st of April. So we're tentatively looking at the April 20th for... You're coming back on the 20th? No, I'm not coming she back until the 21st. Could. No, I'm flying back in on the evening of the 21st. I'm going to watch you for those tickets. Well, it would be nice to have something in April. I can't do it earlier than that, the first two weekends in April on, on, on travel. And the other question is, how many ways do you want to do in the time allotment at each one? And I thought the 20 minutes was going to be very rushed. Uh, I thought a half hour is more appropriate, but that's what we wanted to do when we set that up. So, well, and then do we have six or are we doing eight? <laughs> half, half an hour is fine. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was. And I was under the mistaken impression that we were going to have a sort of staggered approach to the last go round where we would spend a very brief amount of time at the places we had already reviewed and, and more substantial where we hadn't heard from people before. And so I thought that on the new and uh, the new evaluations, we were a little bit rushed. Yeah. So, and, and not so much from my perspective, but I think that given the significance to, the, you know, the, the residents that part of our due diligence requires us to have for them enough time so that they are, you know, thoroughly. Right. And I, I, I think at a, a couple of occasions we found ourselves in the awkward situation of telling them we had to move on, and that, that made me a little uncomfortable. But we can certainly do more than six, because I think the uh -huh. first time we stayed out till one. That was no. Nine and noon. Nine and noon. Nine and noon. Okay. Right, well, so let's, so. It's start earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, so we, we talked about the 20th or the 27th, any other? When, when is Memorial Day? No, that's May. May. Right. Yeah. Not this year. Getting out of <laughs> They move it every year. <laughs> <laughs> any other thoughts between those two dates? Uh, I don't think we should leave that day out. April showers bring May flowers. All right, so we'll do 27 and then MJ can come. That's that's it. It. I'm wondering if we should do a rain day. We're going to catch the 27th, for instance, should we look at the next weekend in May. So Why can't we do this in the lake? Do we have to put what, notice you, on You ride your bike everywhere. I'm not. Maybe. We won't be able to. That, that yeah, that'd be, there'd, be, there'd, be, there'd be a public notice issue. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. 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 yeah, we're just yeah. 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 No, no rain date. Big umbrellas. Big umbrellas. Big. Big. All right, so that's it. We're, we're going to set it up for the 27th. Yeah. 27. 27. Yeah, so that MJ can come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you want to do 9 to noon with 6 ways, correct? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Now while we're talking about them. Do we know which 6 ways we're doing? Uh, no, they're going to work on that. You want to work on this, that? Is it this list you need to be working on? The one you emailed? I That's correct. Yeah. Those are the ones that we had to select from. Since you're talking about missing, I might not make it to our next meeting. I will not. You will not? I will not. Well, I will not then. On the 27th? On the 27th. Well, it, it's... I'll Anyone else? Our next meeting is the approval of the budget that has to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to have an interim meeting centered solely around that at another date and time. That's your call. No, I can't. It won't be the same without the vice chair. <laughs> She'll be in Austria. Well, I think I'll just be back. That's why I'm saying it was today. Um, Alright, well, so before we leave private ways. Um, I do like the idea of a secondary letter going out. Um, maybe 
maybe it doesn't have to be certified, but what what do we need for this uh, right of way? It's a great chance to say, look, the board has voted to approve your street, to recommend that the city council approve your street, and um, and we're going to be doing some work on your street. You may see surveyors. Maybe. So I don't think I need to send out a letter. All I need to do is probably leave a note on each door and then return phone call. That's how we did it on North Street. We knocked on doors and got the, um, the right, to, right, right of entries done. So people have to sign? Yes. Yeah. I guess the question is on Glendale, the notes on the doors don't reach the owners. Right. So we'd have to contact the owners directly on that, either by phone or by letter, and then chase those right of entries down. I'm sure there wouldn't be, if there's a surveyor on the street, it wouldn't be a big issue for the fact that it's private property. I, I, I just like the idea of getting oh, in touch with people. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm bursting at the seams here. We don't have money to survey all these streets, so sending a letter to people just saying the board has made a decision maybe is the best thing. We're not going to be looking for rights of entry for every street because we don't have money to do all the surveying. So, you know, all right. if you want to get the word out, maybe we should just send a letter to the owners and and it doesn't have to be certified. We've yeah, got the list. And we could include a right of entry letter with that that they could return at their convenience. That way, at least there's some collection of that since we're sending a letter out. It doesn't cost any more postage to put two sheets of paper in an envelope than it does one. Okay. So we were agreed then that we can send, it doesn't have to be certified, just a letter um, telling them what the vote has been and mention this. So we should send out the, the, the band letter too, the sand letter. We're not getting to yes. That wouldn't, that wouldn't have the right of entry for me. Yeah. Well, the thing about it, if you send the bad letter, the city council is still going to reverse your decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right, and we should let them So know. there is another process yeah. that needs to follow up before it becomes yes or no. Well, then to me, it's even more important that we send out the bad letter. Okay. So yes, that they know that we've. We are, we are not recommending the street, and if they really want to, you know, bring Here's another option. you know a case to the city council, they can do it. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, they don't know, and they might really feel like they. Yeah, although I don't think we need to say play all that out. No, but uh, they're going to send a letter of two sentences. The board has recommended the city council that your street not be accepted. They're not have to accept it. Yeah. Well, I think we. I think if we're going to go to that distance, then I think we should include the sentence that says, you know. The final, the final decision rests with the city council, and if you're if you're dissatisfied with our recommendation, we encourage you to reach it. You know, talk to your two sentences. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I don't know, Jim. I have a procedural question. Actually, I'm from staff. I should probably know the answer to this, but I don't. But I'll ask anyway. Do Do we make the recommendation to the council before the plans are done, or do they? Do we need the plans to forward? The board's recommendation. The attorney tells me that we have to forward the whole package. Right. So we can't. For, uh, for yeah. positive vote. Yeah. Positive recommendation. And nothing happens in the case of those negative ones. Right. Well, we send the letter to the yeah. city council that right. the board of public works said no, and then the city council said, oh, we want this fee and we want you to create the layout. Right. So this might come back at us that as a With a check. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll get back to everybody. And they will not be certified letters. Correct. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, the stormwater and flood control. Perhaps, Chris, you'd like to. Sure. Um, the inaugural meeting of the task force on stormwater and flood control, and at this point, it's stormwater. It wasn't clear that they were going to talk about flood control, but I think we will. It was last Thursday. We'll be having our second meeting uh, tomorrow. Jim and uh, Terry were both there. Terry gave his usual stellar presentation. Um, and uh, we elected a chair, uh, Emery Ford, who was appointed um, by Paul Spector as the organizer, and he will be serving as our chair. And uh, 
Dan, is it Felton? Yeah. Uh, who's Ward 2 designee, will be serving as vice chair. Um, I, and I think Jim, we were talking about this a little bit before, would agree that, that the people who were selected, some, many of whom I don't know, um, it's a really able group of people with a, a good skill set that represents a lot of the issues that I think we're going to have to confront. Um, so we're moving forward expeditiously. Uh, our plan is to meet um, alternate Thursdays on the Thursdays that do not line up with the city council meetings so that we can have access to the city councilors moving forward. And my expectation is uh, that there's going to be some heated discussion about how we're going to handle this. Really? Yeah. Not, uh, because once, once public input starts to play, I mean, one of the things that's pretty clearly on the table is the creation of a new enterprise fund and some hybrid thereof. And, uh, you know, it's going to touch people in a lot of different ways. The numbers that were being kicked around initially were sufficiently large to be of interest to people. Um, the one thing that I found useful and I hadn't heard before was this, this idea that there is a dollar, an annual dollar figure that is a target and how it compares to the, which it's about $2 million, and, and how it compares to the other enterprise funds, which by comparison is fairly, well, I wouldn't say fairly modest, but it's it's smaller than the other existing enterprise funds, which I think helps us out a little bit. So um, it looks like it's going to be interesting. Our timetable is, is, is fast. Uh, I don't think it's been fully determined how long we're going to be meeting. Um, I think that will come to, to clarity with, with sort of, more discussion about what it is we feel we need to take on. Um, Jim, do you want to? Jim also volunteered to take, although he's a non-voting member, he uh, volunteered to take take notes and the minutes, and uh, they are extremely attractive and thorough. Oh, thank you. So. Hopefully not too thorough, not copious. No, not, they were certainly not copious. I thought they stroke stroke the absolute right tenor as far as note taking and minutes went. I think the good thing too is that the the meetings are being videotaped by. Some of Mimi's colleagues, probably. Uh, who knows? Yeah. But they'll they'll be posted um, on YouTube, and also we're we're getting the link and posting it on the task force website. So we set up a website for the task force with a bunch of resources on the public works website. There's a page there. So if you're really interested and you want to sit through the whole meeting yourself and you can't make it, you're welcome to go to the uh, video and uh, and listen to what's going on. But you know, I would just echo what Chris said. I think we've got a great group of people who are very interested and intelligent and, and want to get to the issues of uh, how to solve this, um, you know, city's obligations here in stormwater and flood control. And one, one of the things that I have to confess is that having not been a, a board designee in this, in, in this type of thing before, my, my, my role was, in my mind, I was very uncertain about what it is. Um, so moving forward, one of the things that I'm going to do is um, provide you guys with an opportunity when they set the agendas to bring their attention any things that you think you want me to find out about to bring back to you guys. Um, you don't have to. I'm just going to provide you with that opportunity. And if you want me to forward you the minutes, I'm going to have to do that. Otherwise, we'll just do recording like this, uh, whatever you prefer. Thank you, Steve. I don't see how you could exclude flood control. Uh, we, think, we think it was just an omission. Yeah. It, Really, what like, happened was like a typographical. Omission. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we were the commission was charged. There was a there was a written charge for what our what our mandate was, and it said stormwater, and it didn't say. And so <laughs> they were going to go back to they were going to go go back to Councillor Specter to, to encourage him to include that as part of, part of the discussion. Half the cost. It depends on the size of the storm. I guess it does. A little storm, you don't need any flood control. <laughs> I, I, yes, I think, again, I think that was an error of omission and not. So, there's no intent behind it. I can, couldn't imagine it possibly being so. All right. All right. Can uh, I just make one little, oh, yeah, go ahead. little Sorry. comment? Yes. I walked yeah. home in the rain yesterday, and I was very thankful I had the large umbrella with me. Because even with that, I was wet from above the knees down. And, uh, it, but I didn't really know we were going to talk about this tonight, but I, I couldn't help but notice the, uh, the sound that a catch basin makes when there's water really flowing into it, kind of like an amplifier. And uh, I had to watch where I was going. The gutters were, you know, dependent on the street, but the river could be anywhere from six inches wide to three feet wide. 
It was like raining hard. I yeah. didn't really check flow in the river today. The Mill River <coughs> definitely crested overnight because when I yeah. walked out this morning, there were, there were places that had been wiped clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I went to bed about nine and it was quite loud and the windows were all closed. Yeah. Wow. It was a if we get a half an inch of rain, the city gets uh, you know, 30, 40 million gallons of water that, that has to be dealt with. Right. That's what that system does. That we're dealing with in most places. You know, I, I, I actually was delivering a system on the road that dead ends into the, the um, entrance to the wastewater treatment plant last night. It was kind of, it was raining pretty hard when I left. And just for the heck of it, I drove down up to the gate, which was closed by then, to look at where the Mill River goes under that little entrance driveway. And I took a picture, actually, of the, the river going past the, the treatment ponds. Mm -hmm. And boy, there's not much difference in elevation uh, between the treatment ponds. If the pump station were to fail, it would, we would quickly, I think, get the Mill River up into those tanks. Is that, I mean, is that, does that seem reasonable? It's very flat down there. Yeah, but would it, would it spread out before it hit the top of the tank? That's the question. I don't know how, how, how far would the water go spread and how long would it take for it to rise. It doesn't have to rise much. But, yeah. but it can spread out quite a bit. All right, it's interesting. Are you going to send the picture to Chris for show and tell? I could. <laughs> yeah, okay. How much rain? Did it vary? About a half an inch? Oh, yesterday? No, I don't think so. Less than half. Oh, yeah. Really? Well, what, do, do we know? I don't know. Actually, what, what do I know? I thought it was a I would have guessed right? an inch. I don't know, know offhand, but they talked to up to an inch was going to fall oh, on really? the National Weather Service. Okay. I can check the. And that was not a terribly big storm. Really it was really oh, no, no, but it was intense and it rained a lot for at least two hours. Yeah. Hmm. While well, I was walking home. <laughs> but you had that. would have happened if you'd been riding too. <laughs> It would have, but it would have been over within 10 minutes. It took 30, actually 40 minutes. But you would have been wetter. No, it would have been drier. I would have had my gear on. My feet would have been wet in my face. That's about it. Okay. Pulaski Park. Oh, no, Upper River. Oh. Oh, so the dam. Chris, I don't know if you followed this at all in the paper, but you know where Musanti Beach is? Yeah. And then the, the high dam that's upstream from there. And then if you continue going further upstream and around the corner and out Chesterfield Road, <laughs> there's one more dam way out there. Right. Uh, it's been um, categorized as a high hazard dam on the Department of Dam Safety would like us to take it down. Or repair it. Or so how do we feel about how do we feel about dams in Northampton and taking them down? In that situation it doesn't like free any waterways or create, you know, free rivers. Well it was again. controversial. But Jim, perhaps you were you uh, Hoping to you put this on the, the menu. BJ told me I could only speak for a minute about this because she wanted to get home and eat. So if you have a lot of questions, I'd be happy to talk so to you later. That's emotional, I'll say. Hi. Upper Roberts Dam. So the, the board had taken a vote after a long public discussions within the community to remove the dam in order to comply with the dam safety order. Um, we had a contract with GZA to file what's called an environmental notification form, which is really the first step of the environmental <coughs> permit to remove the dam. Um, we filed that back in February, or the end of January, I guess, and um, we received um, a certificate from the MEPA office indicating that the document complied with the requirements. We had requested a waiver um, from the need to do an environmental impact report, which would have been a larger study, more expensive to look at other stuff. And they said that because of the detail in the filing that we did, that we fully addressed all the alternatives and that they felt that there was a um, elected public process within the community to talk to about alternatives. So based on those factors, they, they issued a waiver and approved the, the ENF. So the next step um, for the city is to start doing final design and permitting for the dam removal. I have a draft uh, proposal from GZA on my desk that we're doing right now that we'll have in front of the board maybe the next meeting for discussion and approval. So, um, the project's moving ahead, and I just want to point them out here. There's a, a discussion that um, Ned and I have been talking about, 
that I think the whole board needs to uh, get involved with. This uh, taking down the dam or, or doing something to, with the dam is something we've been talking about for five years at least. Um, but there are other projects behind it. The, the dams up by, for the Ryan Reservoir and West Waverly and, uh, and Mountain Street and, and other projects. We've got all these big elephant-sized projects coming towards us, and we've never really had a conversation where we looked at all of them and tried to organize them. I mean, we, we can't do a great big water project and a great big sewer project and a, and a stormwater project and build a building and have them all hit the same year. I think we have to have a discussion about staggering those and, and, and prioritizing them. Um, I'm not suggesting we do this tonight, but it's really, you know, as we're working on this budget, there are numbers in there, I think a group of you saw that this morning, related to the Ryan Dam. And, um, and yet we haven't had a conversation about, is that the next project? I'm worried that we need to have that conversation. Yes. I think that's a good idea, and this is sort of off topic of, but not. In our budget discussion this morning, we also recognized some um, policy for um, cash flow that that you've been clear about what your values are, and mm -hmm. and that what the the topic came up when we were discussing the budget that ooh, but money's cheap now. So I'm not advocating either way, but I did say that I thought it was something we should talk about here, a philosophical discussion. Yeah. So yeah. in that same in that same day. And related to this as well, because all that's why we have to talk about these right. big items coming down the line. So at the moment the only big thing happening is this dam. Mm -hmm. And I think before we start mm -hmm. laying around a, a, another and another we need to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? The community's gonna push back. I believe. Which team are we talking about? Ryan or well, or Ryan. We had proposed that Ryan and West Waitley to be done and <coughs> payment would start in FY14 with construction in 15 and 16. And that was a staff recommendation as part of the budget, but um, as we talked about this morning, it's never been fully vetted with the board as that is the number one priority project to tackle next versus mm -hmm. replacement of the Beaverbrook transmission main versus a list of projects that came out of the draft asset management report. And once we once we spend three hundred thousand, say in FY fourteen, to um, set the stage for decommissioning the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam, we are then proposing in fifteen to spend a million dollars to actually do that. But that's also when Ryan, uh, the Ryan Reservoir and, and West Waitley would start to hit. And really, is that what we want to do? I'm, you know, mm -hmm. and you guys might say, yeah, hell yes, we do. But we should talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, and and the budget is there's sort of a um, an implication as we look at these budget things. Say, oh yeah, we're doing that. Oh yeah, we're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't talked about it. Mm -hmm. So that's. I think there's also the question of how much staff can do at once. Well, work like that would be, I mean, the review would be done by staff, but the actual uh -huh. construction, the oversight, would be done by a third party. We can undertake that, something of that nature ourselves. But there is review time by Jim, myself, uh, other engineers on board that would look at these documents before they go out to bid. It's a good point, though. There are limitations. Mm -hmm. There's only so many hours a day. Mm -hmm. There's only so many big projects you can effectively manage. We rely on consultants to do the majority of the design and oversight and construction, but in order to make sure that the city's interests are being attended to, I mean, you have to pay attention to these projects. They're big projects, lots of money, and it takes time to do it right. And when you take on so many, you have to be aware from a management standpoint, how much time can you manage these jobs? And, and, and how much can we raise the rates in all areas simultaneously? You know, if we're creeping up in water and then stagger behind that, sewer and you know i mean there might be an argument to be made for being a little strategic about which projects are happening when mm -hmm. so that's a coming attraction mm -hmm. that conversation is there something that we could do in advance i mean i think you were talking about having the asset management plans 
That's the goal is to complete the final one, which is the wastewater plan sometime late fall, early winter. And that way we'd have all the plans that we could look at and all the projects they're suggesting and start looking at how the overlays of those might work and might not work um, as far as combined projects in a single public way, like let's say uh, <clears throat> an over a Riverside Drive or Mountain Truck Street needs water and then it might need some sewer work also and makes sense to combine those projects together as one project rather than do the water line then 10 years down the road take on the sewer line which should have been done at the same time, things like that. I was describing in the meeting this morning to the board members that um, these asset management plans are great. The water one we're very happy with. We had seen a draft. We haven't seen the final yet. But the plans are developed for the entire the infrastructure for the entire city. So by the very nature, um, when they identify 40 or 50 projects or whatever it is in there, every single project you need to look at in more detail. So they come up with a list, basically prioritized. Yes, it makes basic sense, but you need to drill down into every single project to evaluate it further to say, well, is this the limit of the project? Is this really the project that we want here? Maybe it's smaller, maybe it's bigger, maybe it's a little bit of this instead of that. So every project needs to be evaluated on its own merits. So the reports are coming in. The CWMP, as Ned mentioned, will be you know, later in the fall. The water plane we're hoping to have within you know, a couple of weeks or so. And I guess my point is that you get these plans, but you don't have the answer with the plan. You still need to think about and evaluate the information. They're terrific guides. The work that we're, the consultants have been doing for us are very happy with. But you need to take that and bring it further in order to get where you want to get, which is what makes sense and what year, what project, that sort of thing. And you know, I think it's a whole process to build on the information we're getting from the consultants to figure out exactly what these capital plans should look like. And each one of these disciplines is not looking at the other disciplines. So even if they were to give us a clear picture of the water, they don't, they're not aware of the fact that we've got something happening over here also. And mm -hmm. Even for that reason alone, they don't want to start staggering things. Does this go into our GIS system, though? I mean, the, the, the plans and the projects and the areas that they're identifying, does, can we use the GIS to help us geographically or locationally identify areas that there's a whole lot? We can do that once we have the final reports. Absolutely. So I know this is straying from the dam that's on the thing we're talking about budget process, but obviously we have a budget that needs to get approved and staff needs some direction from the board also as to if we're not going to take on projects and sit back a year, what are we going to look at for a rate structure? Is it going to be modified to assume we're going to accumulate a smaller amount of money? rather than, and We all know that there are big projects out there so that decision needs to be made by the board also as to what that rate structure is going to be. We've been planning over the years to be a, a 9 to 9.5% rate, steadily climbing to make sure we're prepared for these big projects. But it sounds like we want some breathing room too to make sure that we prioritize correctly and get things right and, and maybe there's some relief to the rate payers in the interim period while we do that. Maybe it's only a year or two, but after that the, the projects start coming in. When you talk about repair relief net, are you envisioning a smaller increase or a freeze or a potential rollback? Or I've never seen a freeze because our costs are always going up right. on personal services, O and M. So a cola maybe? Well, if you wanted to call it a cola, but yeah. there could be a nominal increase. But I mean, before we started looking at these plans and planning projects, we were rolling along at usually two to three percent increases in the water and sewer enterprise fund each year. And it wasn't until about four to five years ago, actually it was 2003 with the water side, uh, going up 22% one year and planning for the water treatment plant and make sure we had enough cash. Um, so it's a, you know, it's an ongoing concern that we still continue to build money for these projects, but when you start looking at the 9% rates each year, we're seeing this morning that all of a sudden we're growing by quite a number of nine million dollars in that five years that we're accumulating in I believe it's the sewer enterprise fund. But one big project at the plant could wipe that nine million dollars out overnight too. So I, I understand the concern from the residents and the pushback that it keeps going up and we don't have defined projects that year this is gonna happen but we all know these projects are looming and they need to get done 
in the near future. So. I mean, one of the, one of one of the things that um, I've experienced with organizations in the past that I work for is that if you have too much cash on hand, it makes it really hard to raise additional money. If you've got people look at you and they say you've already got ten million in the bank, why are you coming to us for an increase? So it's just. Or we should be prepared to clearly articulate why we have the $10 million. Yeah. Exactly why. Yeah. And Not the fact that we may need it. No, yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. But we don't have that. We uh, don't I have understand. that money. That's a projected rate that if we kept what the board had envisioned of these 9 to 9.5% rates going forward, this is what it would look like if we never took on another project in that time period. If you took on a project too, it could be go back to what we have now of you know, two million dollars, two point two million dollars, which is really your two hundred sixty-six operational days that the board voted on back in two thousand ten that we wanted to keep as a designated <coughs> fund balance at all times. Yes. Well, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so but let me. So, so we need to respond to Ned. So, so Ned's saying, um, how do you handle budgeting if we're saying, hold on a second, we need to talk about setting some priorities, and do we in fact agree that the Ryan Dam should be next? And it's true, and, and Mike could help us with this when the time comes. It's true that since the Ryan Dam and the West Whaley Dam are so next, to, uh, close to each other, it would be convenient to do them together, but it may not be necessary. Um, I mean, we just haven't had that conversation. Okay. Yes. So what's what's our deadline for the budget? I mean, I don't think we have much time to really get into this. I'm afraid. There's not a lot of time left. We have our meeting set on Friday morning uh, with the board a regular meeting. And then on the 27th, a vote needs to be completed by the 27th or on the 27th. Uh, the mayor requires those to be to city councilors 45 days before the fiscal year. So mid-April, that has to be delivered to the city council. I'm sure the mayor would appreciate a few weeks in advance from the Board of Public Works their final budgets. So my understanding from Ned is that actually not much money would be, not many checks would actually be written in FY14, is that correct? About, say, for the Ryan Road, or the Ryan uh, Reservoir? Now, if we decide to wait and sit back and take a look at it, is that our priority one? And same with the work that we described this morning about doing work in the control building, the head work, some immediate work down at the wastewater treatment plant to the tune of uh, $2.2 million. And granted, the work needs to get done. The Headworks, as far as the alternative analysis, is is that headworks going to be you know, basically blown up and moved to a parking lot five years down the road from now, or is it going to stay where that we don't know? But the control building, we know on the work inside of that, should go forward because we're not going to change the hydraulic gradient of the plant to put the clarifiers up here to make it all flow by gravity down through the system. So there's there's some bits and pieces that can move forward. The question is, do you want to do it? I mean. I always think that we want to address the uh, health and safety and especially the, the problem of groundwater we have coming in the electric conduits in that control building yeah, as a priority. That's, that's so there's some immediate needs and projects. The other question we talked about briefly was we had uh, thought that we would spend money on uh, evaluating three infiltration inflow areas this year, advanced engineering studies. Right now we have three areas that we know we have problems, we just don't know what the problems are. Do we spend the $200,000 for further engineering studies to try to define what that problem is this year and then come up with some capital planning to correct those problems? That's, see, this, this could be a great discussion. Um, I, my, as an example, in that case, my thought is, why don't we just do King Street? That's the worst of them. It seems like sometimes we, it's possible we're biting off too many studies. I mean, we're not getting around to dealing with the studies we have, is sometimes my thought. Um, 
but it's a it's a great conversation that we need to have. Yes. It, it, it seems to me that if the goal was to vote on the budget on the 27th, that that's going to be a tough goal to achieve. You know, mm -hmm. Some of the board members haven't gone through the first sitting of the review of the budget. Our group asked for a variation on what we were given. Um, the next group might ask for a different variation. Yeah. And we haven't had a discussion as the whole board. Um, it's almost like we need another another meeting before the final vote to get us close. It seems to me. But I, don't, I don't know how to achieve that and meet Ned's schedule. I can facilitate morning meetings anytime you want. Mm -hmm. I can rearrange my schedule accordingly if that's the preference of the committee or the, mm -hmm. of the board. And you need to. You need to vote on the enterprise funds on the 27th so that you have a... Well, let's put it that way. This is our regular scheduled board meeting. I suggest earlier you could have a separate meeting just to discuss what you can make a final vote outside of the normal standard you know, scheduled board meeting if you wanted to. What I need to do is contact Susan Wright and find out what the drop dead date is that they need information in their hands to plug into the budget book. I'm sure it's going to be a couple weeks prior to the presentation to City Council. That's why I don't think we can push it past the month of March. So what do people think about, so it sounds like there's hinting that maybe we could have a special meeting about this, or do, do people, this discussion, does this seem like a good idea? Well, I, think I, mean, it's, I think it's essential because I also, no matter where we end up, I suspect we're going to have a rate increase, and I suspect it's going to be challenged, and we need to be very prepared mm -hmm. to defend it. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, be proactive and explain why we need it before we end up defending it. And so, I, it, it seems to me that we need a, a full board meeting maybe next week to hash through this single topic so that on the 27th, the board's ready to make a decision. Well, I, I'm willing. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd like to. I no haven't had the first meeting yet, but I. But once. Friday. This Friday. Oh, so no problem. Oh, you'll be gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what are you then? I'm back on the uh, 26th. Really, the 27th. But you'll be here for that. Yeah, when I oh, yeah. <laughs> There'll be cake. All right, so let's. Is there a date that you would like to set up a meeting so we can get it properly advertised for next week? I know Thursday night might be hard for me with City Council that evening. What do Thursday and Thursday is. Why wouldn't we meet on a Wednesday like we always do? You could. You could meet on. I can't make it next Wednesday. I have another commitment. A morning meeting? Why don't Friday morning or meeting at 8.30? 8. 8, okay. And then, so could we do, how many people could do a, a, like a Wednesday or Friday morning next week? I could do Friday next week. I could do a Wednesday or a Friday, not Thursday. I could do Wednesday or Friday next week. Calendar's <laughs> wide open. No, I can't. Friday. No, I can't. I can't. Friday. I'm sorry. I can't. Apparently, it doesn't do it. What's your availability, Jim? Mike, I'm not available Wednesday night because I have a CPC meeting about Pulaski Park, which is the next thing on the agenda. Excellent. <laughs> I'd say we don't do Wednesday night. How about Friday morning, the 22nd? Well, I, I just realized I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Not Friday the 22nd. I could do Wednesday in the morning, the 20th. Somebody said no. I, don't, I have to reuse committees at 8 30 that morning. I've got time back for that, don't worry. I'm not. I'm <laughs> so could, could you um, get out of the reuse committee? Yes. I will do that if that's the only time that works. So we could get uh, six, six of us. 
Oh. Yeah. You'd have to find another venue to hold the meeting then, because the reuse committee meets here. Police station. That's where. That's where. I love the police station. It's always neat. Did you see that room? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's the one we need to do. All right, so Ned, does this seem like a good idea? Have a meeting? Do they have a? The, we need to talk. We need to I talk. think so. Yeah. I mean, uh, they, they we're coming to a, a push point that we have to give an answer to the mayor, and we don't have that yet. And there's, I mean, as of uh, this morning's meeting we had, there was a lot of questions as to what we're going to do and not do. Yeah. I heard you guys wanted to borrow a lot of money. Spin, spin, spin. All right. So I think so. Now I believe we're talking about March twenty second. Twentieth. Twentieth. Twentieth at eight o'clock. Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Thank you very much, Amy. Eight o'clock. Okay. I'm in. I'm on board. Eight to ten. Nine thirty. Sorry, I'm like a nine to five job. Man, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're gonna find a room for us. Okay, we'll confirm the location. Something fun. Police first. What's your second choice? Burger King community. Sylvester's. Is that a public meeting area? Wow! Well, if you pull a couple of tables together, sure. I was thinking about the roof. They got a big table down there. That's where we have our Thursday morning staff staff meeting. Staff meeting. Staff meeting. No, I don't have to book the room. You don't have to book it. <clears throat> you have to reserve it. I get the rolling. We get the rolling. I don't think the big table down. holds this this group, right. unfortunately. Well, well BJ's just late for supper, there, and he still roll. wants to yeah. talk about the park. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go wherever you send us, BJ. And is it going to be a one agenda? Yes. Budget discussion. Budget. Yeah. Okay. Can we start as early as the night? Well, I will see if someone can videotape it. I don't think I can, cool. but I will look into it. No, Barry, I can't go skiing. I must look at the YouTube. Well, she can watch so it when I she gets that back. She's <laughs> actually gone, you know, gone through all the facilities in the city and knows what's available and open for public meetings in different city buildings everywhere. And that's the best venue to find something real quick. I think we've pretty well covered Pulaski Park. It's come up several times already in this meeting. <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to add, Jim? Uh, just briefly, we're in the middle of a grant process with uh, the Pulaski Park design. We had the first meeting with the CPC on the 6th in uh, the meeting went well. The CPC is a very thoughtful group of people. They had a lot of good questions about the grant application, um, all the work that the board has done to uh, <coughs> historically arrive at the point where uh, the Stimson Associate team was recommended to contract with. So I we sort of covered that um, history with them. They had interesting questions about the budget, that sort of thing. So um, the next meeting is the 20th, Wednesday the 20th at 7 p.m. Um, there will be a public comment session. I think a, a number of folks are interested in coming um, in support of the, the grant application. So I think things are going well. I'm not really sure where it'll end up, but um, we'll know soon. I think by the end of uh, March, early April, CPC makes the recommendations on April 3rd. So we'll know. We'll know shortly. Thanks. Comprehensive wastewater management plan task. And subcommittee? Eight subcommittees? Number eight. 
Test subcommittee. Test, Test number eight. Test number eight. eight. So I left a one page on your um, front of your um, name plates about um, task eight. And actually, it's task eight and task nine too. Is that there was discussion about what kind of committee was necessary to look at what we're trying to do with the conference of wastewater management plan. I'm talking with Terry. We thought it might be best to start as a subcommittee of the board mm -hmm. to look at developing all these preliminary alternatives for collection such as siphons, pump stations, the gravity collection system, and treatment, which consists of you know the headworks, primary uh, clarifiers, aerators, uh, secondary clarifiers, slug process, chlorination, discharge. Looking at the whole plant and the collection system and then coming up with an analysis of what we want to have happen and move that mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. So we're in that process right now with Kleinfelder and we thought that there should be uh, at minimum the board input into this as perhaps a subcommittee. And just want to have your thoughts on that. Because right now it's Jim and I doing and looking at that work with no other input. I'd like I'd like the opportunity to get involved before it becomes a final product and comes to the board. So I like the concept. Yeah. Okay. So the recommended implementation plan would have established some priorities and timelines. What it will do. The recommended implementation plan will do that, but also prior to that, it's going to do, you know, let's take a look at the headworks. What are all the options we can do with the headworks at the plant? We can leave it in the existing facility that's in and do some minor upgrades. Uh, as I told earlier, we could blow it up and put it out in the parking lot and abandon the old headworks. Real expensive, very low cost to implement. So, and each one of these things that we look at could be applied differently, like the primary clarifier. If you wanted to get rid of the cost of pumping the influent into the aeration, you'd have to change the hydraulic lines of the plant, which means you'd have to lift the primary clarifiers out of the ground to make that work, which probably isn't feasible, but these are the things that these alternatives are looking at from you know, out thinking outside the box to staying within the footprint we have and trying to work with the core facilities that we have. I do just that um, this so this is in the process of preparing the reports an evolution of analysis cost analysis looking at non cost factors and that sort of thing so I guess the point is that we'll need continual input as they move along so we can the best thing we can do I think is to send documents to the board maybe participate in um, conference calls or meetings with client builder because we're really looking at um, a lot of issues related to different parts of the plant, as Ned has indicated, and what the range of cost would be. So it's actually a big deal, and it, it falls along the lines of this discussion we had just a few minutes ago with the budget. So, um, you know, the people need to be clued in. We need to get input because they're going to go from sort of a screening level analysis to more detailed analysis, and then the implementation plan comes out of that. So, client builder really needs input from us along the way as they go. And as Ned had mentioned up to this point, it's been John, John Carver, the chief operator of the plant, and Ned and myself that have been providing some input to Kleinfelder as they move along. So they're not operating in a vacuum, they need our input, and that's the purpose of the committee. Anyone else interested? Volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I only I was looking at you, Dave, because you, you've bought, you've been you've had a little bit of time to work on this stuff, and you've done some you've been real helpful in the past. As Clenchville said, this is the fun part of the report. That's what he told us. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how many people do you want? Uh, it's a subcommittee. It's going to be advertised. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, I would assume that we'd want at least two, if not three, members of the board. But we'd be more than happy to have you all come. I think I, I just want to. I'm fascinated by this stuff. So I'd like to do it. I just don't know what kind of commitment it would be. Well, 
what we've had so far is we do a lot of it by conference calls set at a certain time of the day, mm -hmm. date and time, and um, maybe once a month they've come out for an actual sit-down meeting to do a presentation and have face-to-face -face discussions. That's how it's been to date so far. These are this is a big deal. I mean, these are big numbers coming out of these things. So having meetings here to talk about some of these things, particularly board members are going to be available. I think we could you know, have clients let us send their key staff here at key junctures so that we have face-to-face -face meetings. That wouldn't be helpful. I mean, when they come in, they come in, we get a lot done. So you could advertise them to the rest of us, even if we're not a formal member of the committee. Absolutely. And yeah. so we could attend. Yeah. Do you must are they just working with existing condition drawings? Or is that all new stuff? Has it all been surveyed? Or it, no. What? No. No. But there are drawings, right? There are. So I mean, the conversations must have some basis uh, in the drawings. Yeah, that's right. So I don't know how many drawings I would need to sort of look at it to start to understand it. Jim will inundate your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, in my experience is we probably get a lot more out of meeting and looking at the drawings together rather yeah, than yeah. But it would be great sometimes these are a little tough to sort through. Well, things. even just a plan, so the basic layout yeah. it sort of labels the you're talking about the headworks or that would the, the pump house or <coughs> the clarifiers and you kinda know what those pieces and parts are, but I don't really know what they are on, on that site. So mm -hmm. it'd be great to have just a basic layout plan that we could send that task eight presentation that Frank Elder gave us. Yeah, we have something like that. That'd be great. So we have Mike, David, and Gary. Thank um, you. I question whether we can participate in conference calls and still have it be a public meeting. Mm -hmm. So our involvement may have to be limited to meetings here. Uh, well, I, guess you, I guess if it was a call, you'd have to post it. And then anybody in the public could join the call if they wanted to. Or you could do it on a rotating basis. What you could do is we could do the call out of here, call the public, and I, I don't know, I'd have to ask that question. You want to oh, ask and <laughs> inquire. Right. 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 Yeah, what an option, convene here and just have a speakerphone. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I'm sorry. That's a right. speakerphone okay. open. Okay, okay. that's okay. Either everybody in there. You're that's what forward. I was thinking too about. Okay. Seven phone lines of all the time. Okay, fine. That'd be tough. Great. Okay. Um, all that's left is snow and ice, and there is none. It's melting. It's melting. Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh. So I just want to go over the board a couple of things. Currently, as of the last payroll and charter board council got paid for on it, we have a deficit of $71,600 at this point in snow and ice. And today at 11.30, NEMA came out to look at the initial damage assessments, the IDAs they call them, for the uh, big snow event that we had back in February 9th, I think it was. And right now we have uh, submitted DPW only $97,500 in costs for the first 48 hours of the snow event. Um, we believe that the county will actually um, qualify and the city will qualify based on what we our costs were. And if we get a reimbursement, it's a 75% reimbursement, we could be reimbursed to the tune of about $73,125. So they're making their way across the counties right now, across the Commonwealth, and trying to collect all these IDAs from all the communities and try to tally them up because there's a state threshold that has to be met and then there's a county threshold that has to be met to be qualified for these reimbursements. So it might, might help us break even on snow and ice, is that what you're saying? Well, what we don't know if the check would be in here before the end of the fiscal year. Mm. That's what we don't know. Okay. Gary, anything else? Uh, thanks for fixing the pothole in front of the high school. I ruined a tire. I drove through it with my wife's car. And I didn't know I ruined it until she found out the next morning. Um, and it's a pothole that I was watching grow as I rode around that same bend on my bicycle because I had to avoid it every time. So I knew exactly where it was. But I hit it. <laughs> and it's one of those 
nasty one sort of between the, the drainage structure and the asphalt, so it kind of... We now fixed, it looks great. Then. We do have a claim process for that. Nothing if you care to file a claim. <laughs> Road hazards are everywhere. It's not done through this. I'm it's just done through downtown. It's not part of DPW. That's fine. I, I'm glad I didn't drop my bicycle tire into it. <laughs> Chris? I uh, chaperoned 20 te teens and preteens up to Montreal over the weekend, and one of the co chaperones and I were spending a couple minutes looking at each other, going, I know you're from somewhere, and it turned out it was Mike Morey, who's our, who's our forester contractor. Forester. <laughs> um, so he and I went out and had a couple beers and talked talk trash about it. talked trash about trees. <laughs> You're on the tree committee chair. He must have been proud to be associated with But you. those aren't the trees that matter to, to Mike. That is true. <laughs> he doesn't really care, but he promised to take me out in the woods and show me trees. So. Real trees. Real trees. Mike? I'm all set. Thank you. All set. Okay. 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 Okay.